Hello, my dear students. Let's learn about the next lesson in comprehension. The chapter name is Helen Keller. Her full name is Helen Adams Keller. She was born in 1880 in Alabama, United States. She died in 1968. She was an American activist for the physically disabled people. Though both blind and deaf, Helen Keller traveled the world over, fighting for improvement in the education and life of the physically handicapped. This is believed to be the childhood home of Helen Keller. In 1882, Helen Keller was affected by an illness, we call it a brain fever. She was affected by a brain fever and that produced a high body temperature. The true nature of the illness, the true nature of the illness remains a mystery today. Some says that it may be scarlet fever or meningitis. Within a few days after the fever broke, Keller's mother noticed that her daughter didn't show any reaction when the dinner bell was rung or when a hand was waved in front of her face. That means she has lost the power of hearing and the power of sight. Next, the arrival of the teacher, Anne Sullivan. Helen wrote, The most important day I remember in all my life is the one on which my teacher, Anne Mansfield Sullivan, came to me. I am filled with wonder when I consider the immeasurable contrast between the two lives, which it connects. It was the 3rd of the March, 1887, Three months before I was seven years old, she wrote like this. Miss Sullivan taught Helen the names of the objects around her. The morning after the arrival of her teacher, Helen was led into a room and given a doll. After she had played with it for a while, Miss Sullivan slowly spelled the word D-O-L-L -L, doll onto her, onto her hand. At once, Helen was interested in this finger play and tried to imitate her teacher. When she finally succeeded in forming the letters correctly, she was flushed with pleasure and pride. They had great difficulty with the words muck and water. Helen could not tell the difference in their meanings, that is, what they each represent. She was so confused. Once, she wrote once, as we were walking down the path to the well, I was attracted by some peculiar smell. I asked, What is that strange smell in the air? Miss Sullivan led me to the well. She took my hand and placed it under the spout from which water gushed out. As a cool stream washed his hand, Miss Sullivan spelt the word water. W A T E R on her other hand. Helen stood still, wonder and amazement written all over her face. She fixed her attention on the sensation experienced by both her hands. Helen learned how to read. Miss Sullivan taught her this by giving her strips of 
cardboard with race letters on them. On reaching the house, every familiar object she touched seemed to have a new meaning for her. She was eager to know more. She was eager to know more things. As her education progressed, though not without a difficulty and frustration for both teacher and pupil, Helen was living a new life full of excitement. She now had the key to a language and was keen to use it. Helen Keller's remarkable story as the first deaf and blind person to obtain a bachelor's degree is widely known. My students, we people who have eyes to see and ears to hear can learn easily. But in the case of Helen, Helen could not, as she was both blind and deaf. Even in her affliction, she did not allow herself to be handicapped. She made a full use of all the other faculties she had. This was an advantage that she became the world's renowned teacher of the blind and deaf.